Welcome to Church on the Way. We're really pleased that you could join us today. We trust you're going to enjoy the message and uh, may you be encouraged through the Word of God today. If you really like this channel, please subscribe and uh, enjoy what God has got for us. God bless you. Ambassadors for Christ. We shouldn't be holding on to all that to define us. Being an ambassador for Christ defines us. So, you might be thinking about, you know, how can God use me? I mean, look at me. Look at what I am. Look at the mess I am. In some instance, we think, you know, Lord, I've done these things. Lord, I've, I've made mistakes here. I want to tell you guys, that the first followers of Christ that he commissioned were flawed men. They weren't perfect. Like us, they were flawed. Yet, knowing all those flaws, Jesus used them. He commissioned them. Jesus entrusted his ministry to them. In the same way, he has chosen us, as broken and defective as we are, to join him in reconciling God to his people. We need to join our Lord Jesus Christ in reconciling people to God, and we need to know that Jesus is our pattern. We need to know that he is the light, he is the way. And other people need to see that in our lives. In some instances, you might be the only Bible, the only living word anybody ever reads, is you. They might not ever pick up the Bible and read it, but they might be able to read it through you. So what are we giving them to read? Which page are we on? Have we opened ourselves up to that page of this is who I am and this is what I am and this is all the things I have? Or have we cut that page out and replaced it with this is what I am. I am an ambassador of Christ. Are you allowing people to see that and only that. So, this is what it means to be a fisher of men. You know, our purpose for being here is that my others may come to believe in Jesus and be reconciled to God through Him. Maybe that happens because I show up in their lives at the right time to, to demonstrate the love of God to them and invite them to believe. Imagine the impact you can have by showing up in someone's life when they need it most. Imagine that impact. So, are we showing up in people's lives when they need us? Are we showing up at the right time? Are we impacting their lives in the right way? Because we can have an impact, good or bad. So are we having that impact, that ambassador of Christ, impact in their lives? Are we showing them how to be reconciled to God? through Christ. So let's be impacting the lives of people by demonstrating the love of Christ. Demonstrating the love of Christ. By not putting a front up, but by demonstrating it. If we can turn to John 1, 10 to 13.
also from the NRV version. He was in the world, and through the world, and sorry, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. We have been given that. We are children of God. We are born of God. You know, in some instances we, well, in most instances we have dreams. We have things we want to accomplish, things that we might want to do. When we're young, we've got a, a, a career that we're trying to forge. So when you look at that dream, and you take that dream, or you take whatever you want to accomplish, and you line it up with a commission, the Great Commission, does it line up with the Great Commission? Because if not, is it a dream worth following? Because what is our purpose? Our purpose is to make disciples. We might have a hobby. We might have something that we tend to do. It might not be something sinful, but it's a hobby. Is it drawing us away from Christ? Or is it drawing us to Christ? Is it something that's bringing us to a point where we can reconcile people to God? Where we can show them the ambassadorship of Christ that we have? Or is it something that's drawing us away? We need to then take that, put it on top of the pattern Christ has placed before us, and ask ourselves, is that thing worth spending our time on? Are we willing to let that thing draw us away from God? Are we willing to let that thing move us away from what God has for us? Move us away from the plans and purposes He has destined for your life? Are we willing to let that take us away from perhaps one person that you might come into contact with that you can Reconcile to God. Maybe that's one person. You might be the only one to ever have that opportunity with that one person. Are you willing to let that happen? You know, in this whole thing, in being an ambassador for Christ, are you inviting people into your world? Or is it one of those things where you stay over there, I'm happy over here? Or are we inviting them into our world? Are we inviting them in to see every aspect of how we live, how we move, what we do? Or are we worried about what they will see when they come into our world? Are we praying for them? Are we continually praying for them? When we get on our knees before God and we have conversations with God, are we asking God, I care for that person, Lord? Lord, touch that person. Lord, soften his heart that we might see him again, Lord, that I can reconcile him to you, Father. Or are we praying for ourselves, Lord, please protect me, Lord, let me have a good day. Thank you, Father, off you go. Are we caring for them? That word caring for them means that we might have to suffer in some way. It means that we might have to take something away from ourselves. It means that we might have to cook them a meal and go and drop it off. Some people find that difficult. But are you caring for that person? 
Are you asking that person, do you need something? Can I help you with something? Is there anything I can do for you? Are you showing them the love of Christ? And then finally, are we sharing our story with those people? Are we sharing how Christ has made a difference in our lives? You know, Sally just shared with us what happened with her cards. Are we sharing those stories with people? Are we telling people how Christ has made a difference on Tuesday in my life? On the weekend in my life? An hour ago in my life? Are we sharing those small stories with them? Well, you might think it's small and insignificant, but to the people that we're sharing it with, you might see it as something that can change one story at a time. And bring them closer to the Lord one story at a time. So, you know, Christ's invitation to Peter and Andrew is the same invitation he has given to you and Or are we making that hard decision to say, Lord, I will follow you regardless. I will lay it down now and do not to harm you. So what are we standing on? Are we standing on the lies of the devil? Or are we going to stand on that and are we going to move forward for the plans that God has for us? Are we going to follow him wholeheartedly? Are we going to be those ambassadors for Christ? Matthew 4, 18 to 20. Also the NIV version. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he, see, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, and they were crossing and met into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. At once. They didn't say, no, maybe tomorrow or next month or the year after. At once. We should be committed to reconciling people to God. As we see now, as we saw in Corinthians 5, Paul tells us that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He calls us Christ's ambassadors to share the message of reconciliation with others. Are we going to stand up today? and share that message with others. Are we going to stand up and accept that calling upon our lives to be Christ's ambassadors? So I'm going to leave that with you today. Are you willing to stand up and say, Lord, I am your ambassador for Christ? You know, one last point. When someone asks you, so what do you do? What's our first answer? Oh, I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. Why don't you turn around and say, I'm an ambassador? Why don't you find your identity in that? Because by turning around and saying, I'm an ambassador, that word, people are going to go, you? An ambassador? And you've already opened the door because they're going to ask you an ambassador of what? I'm an ambassador of Christ. And just in that, you've opened the door to be able to speak to them. So why don't you change the way you answer? Challenge yourself in that. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to call Mark up. Well, I'm glad um, we are being challenged um, in that. Um, I wanted to just take last week's message and just, it's been affirmed against this week, just to bring that commitment to reality. Uh, but we cannot go further. I think what we said, we want to make sure everyone's reconciled to Christ. 
but there are folk out there on YouTube, and there might even be folk here today. I don't know what your relationship is with Jesus, but if we can just bow our heads, and if you, you, if you want to make right with Jesus today, I think that's very really important. You know, this, this reconciliation, reconciliation with Christ is so important. We need to lay down our lives and say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And if you're in that place today, with eyes closed, so you only respond to him. I'd love you to pray this prayer after me and even those folks that are out there on YouTube. If that's you today, will you, will you extend your heart to Jesus? Not to me, and not be concerned with the people around you, but will you extend your heart to Jesus and call upon his name? And believe this powerful prayer that I'm going to lead you in, believe it in your heart, and God will transform your life and bring you into a place of being his child, and God will be your father. Let us pray. Will you say after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent your Son to die for me, to pay the price for my sin, and I realize that I am lost, and that you have found me. And I come willingly to you and submit my life to you. And I ask you to take the reins of my life now as I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Please forgive me of my sin. Will you wash me and cleanse me? And will you make me your child? And enable me to follow you the rest of my life. Will you fill me with your, your power, your enabling to follow you and to be part of your family? and to serve you all the days of my life, and to bring glory to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've made that decision, will you please come and let us know, and those on YouTube, if you're filling that form below, and that you've committed to Christ, and we'd love to follow up on you, and to grow you in following Jesus. Amen. I want to continue with this whole thing of being an ambassador for Christ, and the Lord challenged us last week to be a servant of the Lord, and and to be asking the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do? And I'm going to give a testimony. We've got an incredible opportunity. And as Brad said, sometimes things are very uncomfortable. Kayla is studying um, at Vitz, and her good friend that lives in Cape Town is looking for a place to stay. And uh, Nikki challenged me and said, Can, why don't we just open up our home to her? And we also said, okay, I'm going to open up our home. And her name is Tyler. And Tyler... I lost her father many years ago, and she's of, of the Jewish faith, not really following it. And she's staying in the home, and she's been an absolute blessing to us. And we, we, we're not um, preaching to her, but we're ministering to her through lifestyle. Uh, our lives are actually telling her who she is, who we are, and who Christ is in us. But it was her birthday the day, and we invited to her Jewish family to go and have a meal with them. And uh, I thought, okay, Lord, here we go. <laughs> What's going to happen with this? And we had, it was a fantastic experience. We went out for a meal, and her grandfather, the lawyer, and uh, the grandmother, they're quite elderly, but he's very opinionated. And, uh, and I said, I'm not going to preach the Bible at him, but I'm going to just be a friend to him, and I'm going to love him. And he's a divorce lawyer in, um, in, in Boxburg. And, you know, God just put words in my mouth. And I said to him, you know, you know what my opinion is why people get divorced? And I said, people are selfish. That's why they get divorced. And uh, he shook my hand and said, how did you know that? I've been doing this for so many years. And that's my hypothesis that people get divorced because they're selfish. And all of a sudden, they're very poor. And he asked me, what do I do? I said, well, I'm a pastor. I, um, I preach the word of God. And the, the shop owner, who's his, who's his good friend, was going through some difficulty. So he turns to this guy and says, You must tell this guy to come and pray for you. <laughs> and in that, the guy afterwards came and said, You must pray for me. And he did pray for him, you know, in that process. So I want to just tell you, every one of you has a role to play for the testimony for Jesus. It's not always Bible punching and quoting scriptures, but just loving people, as Brad has so encouraged us today is that we need to touch people with, with the love of God. And uh, I just know this is our season. God has said to us uh, through the late part of the this church will be called Church on the Go. And I want to be clear over us that we are a church on the go. And the season that we go in is that we come together to, to worship the Lord, we have to be encouraged, 
but our ministry is out there to reconcile people to Christ. And I really want to encourage you that every single day, every single person that God puts across your path, if you thought you put in your mind, to pray for people, to teach people with Jesus. You know, people are in darkness and they need the light. And we're the only ones that carry the light. If someone didn't reach out to you with the light of Jesus, you wouldn't be here today. And I want to encourage us, you can love the people out there. Wherever you are, there's someone you can touch and someone that you can, you can show kindness and you can show caring to and you can impact their lives incredibly. And I'm telling you now, as I as put that message out on Friday, God's going to give you opportunities to do this. Wherever you find yourself, whether it's a child, whether it's an elderly person, whether it's your work, work colleague, whether you're your, your guy on the bicycle next to you, whoever it is, we can be kind to them. We can be loving to them. And I'm telling you, your light will shine. And they will start to see what makes you different to me. And they will see Jesus. And I want to encourage you, this is the season that God is for us. And this is the scripture that the Lord gave to me last night. And I really believe this is what God's declaring. It came through the prophetic message um, this morning. Isaiah 60, verse, verses 1 to 3, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. The darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness over its peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And what I see there, the Lord's light is upon us. Jesus even said, I am the light of the world. But then he said, you are the light of the world. And if you just portray Jesus in the simplicity of who you are, and just don't try to be someone else, just be who you are, and let his light shine through you, I'm telling you, the light of the Lord is going to rest upon us, and people are going to come out of darkness and come to know him. We have a great task ahead of us. This is not something onerous. We're not going to be doing crusades. God has only you and I to do those things. You know, mom, that lady on that WhatsApp group, you reach out to her. You don't, social media, wherever you find yourself, reach out and touch people with the love of God. And you know, to make you even feel in yourself and find confidence in yourself when you reach out and you touch people with the love of Christ because you have the love of Christ. And you know, we've preached much from this pulpit. It's time to do it. You are church on the go. And I'm asking you to go in obedience, not to me, but to your Lord and to your Savior. That's why you're not in heaven now. Because you have a task to go and touch people with his life. Don't matter an incredible um, disciple. He says, you are put here to impact people for eternity. Isn't that incredible? Eternally minded that your job is an eternal job. This is not your vocation as an accountant or a, a secretary or a receptionist, wherever you find yourself. You have an eternal task to impact people with the love of Christ. But I'm asking you, are you prepared to follow your Lord and do what he tells you to do? If it's you today and if you want to be an ambassador for Christ, because it's a choice, you don't have to be. And you want to be doing, going as this church or that church, church on the go, I'm asking you to stand today. And even though on, on YouTube Live, will you stand today? If you want to make it, there's no force here. You don't have to do it. If you want to be committed to go out and to tell people about the love of Jesus, I'd love to pray for you to do that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, you see the hearts of everyone here today. And Lord, I just love it when your people are submitted to you and willing to do your will and to fulfill this great commission that you've given to us. And Lord, I just ask that you would take everyone's commitment to you, to obey you, and Lord, you will use them powerfully to give testimony to you. And Lord, I pray everyone will be, have a sense of knowing that you are using them as they speak your life and speak your word and speak your love to the people that they come into contact with. May you give them testimony of the seed that they are sown and the fruit of that seed 
a year at least so to do this work now. So Lord, I just I speak your, your, your word over them. Go and make disciples of all nations in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I've got one, one request of you out of this. When God uses you, I want you to give peace to me. I'd like you to even on the Sundays where we meet here, where we meet in the life groups, wherever we meet, I want you to give God the glory and the honor how he's used you. I think that's very important because you need to be affirmed and you know sometimes this is going to cost you a lot. And we need to be standing together in this process as I shared last week. And I want all of us to have a testimony to Jesus. Will you give testimony to God and bring glory to his name as God uses you? I know you can. Amen. Thank you everyone. Quinton, over to you. You're going to close the meeting. Thank you.